Now, joining us in the studio is Dr. Go Myung Hyun from the Asan Institute for Policy Studies. It's good to have you back on the show again. It's my pleasure. So the U.S. State Department mm. has emphatically stated mm. that the reason for the cancellation or postponement mm. of the meeting between Pompeo and Kim Young Chul is simply a scheduling issue. Mm. Does that sound right? Well, probably it's a scheduling issue because uh, they need to reschedule this, but they kind of find a common date now. Mm. And probably there's a, a more important reason underlying it, just a, just a, a simple scheduling stuff. Mm. I mean. South Korean foreign minister also seemed to confirm mm. reports that it was North Korea the ones who mm. called off the talks. Uh, what does that tell us? Well, I, I think clearly the underlying the, the scheduling issue is an important difference between the two sides about the pace of the nuclearization on the part of North Korea, as well as the, what North Korea wants from the United States, which is a relaxation of the sanctions. I think uh, the two sides haven't been able to come to an agreement about the possible scheduling of relaxation <laughs> of the sanctions or the nuclearization steps that North Korea should be taking by now. So I think that's the reason why uh, possibly for North Korea to uh, send a signal to the United States that until the United States is ready to relax some of the sanctions and measures, that North Korea is not going to uh, engage or in the United States diplomatically. Uh, the Washington Post, which first reported mm. that it was North Korea who might mm. have uh, cancelled mm. uh, in the first place, the reason they cited was saying that Kim Young Chul actually wanted to meet with Trump as well, but that Trump's schedule didn't fit because mm. he had to go to Paris, mm. and that without Kim Young Chul meeting Trump, they weren't going to meet. Mm. Does that sound right to you as well? I mean, is that, could that be a reason why Kim decided to not come? Well, there's a, this, if that's indeed true, that Kim Young Chul decided not to come to Washington, because he wouldn't be able to meet with President Trump. That would be like the, the mirror image of what happened back in August when Pompeo was selected to go to Washington, uh, Pyongyang, sorry, and then supposedly uh, he canceled, I mean, he was forced to cancel by President Trump at the last minute because there's no guarantee that Secretary of State Pompeo will be meeting with Kim Jong-un. So I think uh, in a way, uh, North Korea is reciprocating uh, what happened, what they did to Pompeo last time. Uh, so. Actually, the other way, what, what happened to them last time. So I think uh, in that sense, uh, there's uh, some symmetry there. But I think uh, still, the underlying reason is it's beyond scheduling. It's about the pace of denuclearization. Mm -hmm. So then these kind of cancellations, this pace of mm. denuclearization that you talk about, then how concerning is it that these uh, meetings keep getting delayed like this? Mm. Well, it's, it's just a uh, negotiation tactic by the both sides. I mean, uh, we know that North Korea has uh, used uh, last-minute cancellation of a scheduled meeting as a way to pressure the other side to uh, concede a negotiation point or, or like make a better offer. But this is the first time that we are seeing this on the American side. So I think, uh, I mean, that's why there's a little bit of uh, uncertainty about the future prospect of negotiation. But on the other hand, we have to take this as a natural uh, aspect of negotiation between an unpredictable uh, regime like in North Korea and an unpredictable U.S. president like President Trump. So you don't think we should be frustrated by this at all? You think um, this meeting will happen at some point, but just that there'll be more power play along the line? Exactly. I think uh, we should be more patient in this regard. I mean, uh, fundamentally, there are, uh, the, the matter of principle is very difficult to resolve. I mean, the pace of nuclearization uh, is going to be slow, and I don't know whether that will be satisfactory for the United States or South Korea for, the, for, that, for that matter. But on the other hand, uh, we still have to give diplomacy a chance, or at least until the end of the year. But critics would say, by having these kind of delays, mm. it gives actually, I mean, uh, North Korea a chance to stockpile weapons, mm. and it's actually playing into North mm. Korea's hands, because this gives them a reason uh, uh, to keep continuing its nuclear program. What do we say to those kind of uh, criticisms? Well, clearly, there's a downside risk uh, in which North Korea might be uh, actually taking advantage of the delay to further perfect uh, its WMD technology. But you have to remember that North Korea has already accumulated enough uh, nuclear materials to build several dozens of uh, nuclear warheads. And I think that they have enough deterrence capability against uh, South Korea and the United States already. So building more weapons probably is not going to increase, too, um, increase the threat profile of North Korea too much. So there's that uh, issue. And another issue is that 
as long as they cannot test missiles, which is a very important component of their nuclear deterrence posture, uh, it will be difficult for North Korea to perfect uh, the intercontinental missile, ballistic missile technology that they need to develop deterrence against the United States. So in that sense, the test freeze, the missile test freeze and nuclear test freeze that North Korea is currently observing is actually uh, reducing the risk of North Korea becoming a, a fully capable nuclear state. So in that, uh, for that reason alone, I think uh, there's uh, some value in having North Korea refrain from uh, further provocations in the form of testing, especially in the missile kind. Mm. Uh, in a press conference after the midterm elections were announced, uh, mm. Trump also addressed some of these issues, and he reiterated that you know he is still looking to have a summit with Kim Jong Un mm -hmm. sometime uh, early next year, and he tried to be reassuring to the people that you mm. know uh, the negotiations with North Korea are ongoing, mm. but uh, that uh, it's just going to take some time. Mm. So despite this postponement of this Pompeo mm. Kim Jong Un meeting in New York. I mean, how reassuring is it that Trump would say he seems quite cool about it and saying it's going to happen at some point? Well, definitely it's actually reassuring that the U.S. president is, uh, is willing to be patient about uh, uh, negotiating with North Korea. And I think uh, underlying his patience is the fact that uh, the belief, uh, sorry, that uh, the sanctions, as long as they remain in place, is going to act as a pressure mechanism which will coerce North Korea to uh, make a better offer to the United States. So I think uh, that's what uh, President Trump is counting on. So he probably believes that time is on his side. So, but then the downside to that kind of logic is that North Korea, if indeed it's true that the time is on the American side, or the, the, which means that time is against the North Korean side, uh, the downside of that logic is that North Korea might uh, uh, lash out by uh, pro uh, starting the uh, cycle of provocation that we observed uh, in 2017. So uh, there's a, a significant downside risk to this idea of holding back and uh, wait for North Korea to make a better offer. But on the other hand, the upside of this is that uh, we are going to enjoy uh, some stability in the Korean Peninsula for the foreseeable future. I mean, do you think there is this risk of lashing out? Because they've been building, building for the last year, improving relations mm. with the US and South Korea. Mm. Would they really risk all that? No, I think so. I think, uh, you know, in a way, North, I don't think North Korea is in a happy place right now. There's a reason why they stopped their cycle provocation uh, earlier this year and that they actually reached out diplomatically to South Korea and the United States. Uh, one objective was to be recognized as a nuclear state by the international community, but Another more Im immediate objective was to have uh, the sanctions lifted to, to an extent. And the fact that uh, despite the North Korea's uh, uh, patience and discipline in not uh, carrying out provocations, uh, that he, they are not being rewarded, I think uh, North Korea will be reaching a point soon in which uh, they will think that the only language that the Washington understands is a language of provocations, and they'll try to shift the attention back to Pyongyang from where, they are, where, where it is right now. Mm. So what happens next? I mean, uh, there's all these things about, mm. you know, the details about denuclearization, mm. about uh, getting inspectors into mm. North Korea and uh, possibly North Korea wanting to uh, ease sanctions mm. and that kind of thing. Where are we at this point? Are we still some way off about any of this kind of things being resolved? Or do you think it, it will happen uh, um, mm. quite quickly soon? Well, all the things that uh, we expect uh, or would like to happen in the Korean Peninsula, such as uh, further development of the inter-Korean uh, dialogue, as well as inter-Korean economic cooperation, as well as the denuclearization, uh, hinges upon on the what kind of denuclearization roadmap will emerge from the ongoing talks between North Korea and the United States. So it's not a linear process, it's actually a, a staggered process. So once we reach this threshold in which uh, Pyongyang and Washington can agree on a possible roadmap, then I think it's going to allow a quantitative jump uh, in the in the inter-Korean engagement as well as the international engagement with North Korea. So until then, we'll be in this limbo. Mm. And as you, and you said, this limbo, the, mm. the problem with this limbo is, though, there are other things that involve here mm. as well. For example, uh, at the height of the uh, feel-good factor mm. in North Korea relations, there was all this talk of uh, uh, a declaration to end the mm. Korean War, a peace treaty even, and uh, other inter-Korean mm. economic projects. So are these, everything like this on hold while these uh, two sides continue to hold off talks and uh, have this uh, uh, tug of war? Yeah, uh, clearly uh, it's not a linear process. Uh, it's, a, it's unfortunate, but that's the, that's the fact. Uh, we have to wait until 
we see a breakthrough in the, in the democratization roadmap between uh, Pyongyang and Washington for, to see a further expansion of the inter-Korean dialogue. So I think it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a kind of an objective by Washington to remind uh, all the players, uh, including South Korea, that uh, denuclearization is first and foremost the most important issue when it comes to North Korea. Mm. The other things seem to be being delayed as well. For example, uh, the South Korean, uh, no, it's not the South Korean, the uh, Russian official uh, mm. recently just said that uh, they were mm. expecting Kim Jong-un to maybe meet mm. Putin next year. Mm. Earlier uh, last month, they were saying it was going to happen before the end of the year. So does this process, this difficulty with North Korea and the U.S. mean everything is being pushed back? Exactly. I think even uh, other players, uh, such as China and Russia, despite their very strong anti-American rhetoric, uh, in, I mean, deep down, actually, they observe uh, the, the international sanctions regime against North Korea. They understand that uh, they cannot really take the initiative in the Korean Peninsula without, or a successful initiative uh, without the American agreement. So I think, uh, I think from, uh, even from Russia's point of view, uh, there's not much that Russia can do for North Korea at this point when there's no resolution on the denuclearization front. And the fact that uh, the pos a possible summit between Putin and Kim is possibly postponed until next year is a reflection of this, uh, this dilemma. And, of course, the South Korean president invited mm. Kim Jong-un to visit uh, the uh, South Korea as mm. well before the end of the year. Do you think that will also be delayed until a future date? It's likely because uh, I think uh, the, the originally when uh, President Moon and Kim Jong-un scheduled to have uh, a Seoul summit, uh, the fourth inter-Korean summit uh, later this year, possibly in December, uh, 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 and the, uh, the logic underlying it was that there will be a, a U.S. DPRK summit, the second one, in November after the midterm elections in the, in the United States. Since uh, there is no the second U.S. DPRK summit in which possibly there could have been a breakthrough in the denuclearization talks between the two countries, uh, there's less need, uh, uh, I mean, I mean, there's less ne necessity for uh, two sides to to come to I mean, have another summit in Seoul because there will be no much to be, to be, to be discussed such as uh, expanding the, the inter-Korean economic engagement. This announcement of the cancellation mm. of the uh, Pompeo Kim Young Chul mm. uh, talks came just as the U.S. midterm elections mm. were announced, uh, the results mm. of which. And, of course, these talks were also put off until mm. after the midterm elections were happening. And so it always seemed like the midterms, mm. you know, were um, uh, important mm. to, to these talks as well. Mm. But you don't think actually the results of the midterm elections had something to do with this uh, talks being cancelled, do you? Uh, I, 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 do, I, don't, I don't think so. The reason is because uh, the outcome of the midterm election was uh, widely expected. And it, I mean, so, so one expectation was that the Republicans would keep the Senate, uh, but the House would flip to the Democrats. And that's exactly how the midterm election turned out to be. So the, what, the outcome of the midterm election was uh, definitely in line with expectations. I think the North Koreans operated uh, under the same assumption. And so there's no surprise with the midterm elections. Mm. Uh, the cancellation probably has a little to do with the outcome of the midterm. Mm. Well, I think that's where we have to wrap up here. Mm. So uh, thank you for coming in as always. And Anytime. it's always great to get your insights. Thanks.